All right, so I was streaming and a viewer asked me about how I managed to get this kind of topology and how I, how, especially how I got these fingers in here so cleanly. So I figured I would show the process from start since it's pretty quick. I'm not, obviously not going to do the, do the shaping, but just go through the steps. So I would add a cube. And I just merge everything to the center get, to get a single vertex and extrude it up. And extrude a collarbone. And then add a mirror modifier. And on top of that, I'm going to add a skin modifier, which turns it all into geometry. And over in the sidebar over here, you can scale these vertices. Uh, I have a hotkey for it which is custom, I don't remember which hotkey is by default. You can find it out in the key map. So I just extruded the shoulder and then get myself a neck and a head and I'll extrude hip, knee, ankle and toes. And for this one, what you can do is mark it loose so that produces better topology. And for scaling these parts up, giving them in a little bit more fat, um, you can just use your hotkeys. Um, So then, okay, we had a shoulder, elbow, wrist, and that's going to be our hand. And we'll mar also mark that loose because we're going to do knuckle, second knuckle, third knuckle, grab these, extrude forward, scale down, and then one more for those. And then maybe scale it all down a little bit. There. That's pretty close. Um, so it doesn't look like much right now. But we can add a subdivision. And then apply visual geometry to mesh. Go to sculpt mode. And then just start inflating bits. And this is where you would do the majority of your sculpting and shaping to get him looking exactly like you want him. But I'm not going to spend too much time here because I've already got him over here. So, oh, and also sometimes you get this kind of weird topology over here. So I would use the remesher over here. Uh, Shift R to adjust your voxel size and Control R to remesh. Be careful with the fingers because that's going to merge together if it's too low. See, that's going to happen. So you want to increase that. And maybe just increase that a little bit. So uh, once you've got your shape done, comes a time where you want to retopologize. Blender has some options for that in the object data properties and you probably want to go into uh, remesh and quad remesh. That's one option. And if you click on that, sometimes it gives you good options, other times it gives you nothing. So I tend to not use that. Instead, what I will do is add a cube. We're just going to make some topology real quick and then shrink wrap it on top. So this way, you won't be spending time on snapping things onto the surface, because that's a waste of time. Instead, what we're going to do is uh, create sort of a shell 
on top. And then sculpt it into position later. So I've just uh, put like a wedge between the, the. I want there to be a loop between the 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 legs. The specific resolution doesn't matter at this point. It's just like where do the polygons go? Everything should be pretty close to ninety degree angles here. And then you just extrude. You don't even need to extrude much here. It's only about the topology. Or you don't need a loop for that because we'll add that later. And then we go down a bit, extrude forwards. And that's your topology. And then afterwards you can add a loop here and make sure everything is roughly squares. Um, don't worry about that side, we're going to mirror it later. Oh, and that's open. And then you do the same sort of thing over here. Just extrude up. That's gonna close. And that's gonna be extruded for the arm. And then we're gonna have a spot for the head. Actually, at this point, I'm gonna use hard op symmetrize to just make it symmetrical so it's a little easier to look at. There we go. That one's um, over here. You can make a choice. You're gonna get a little bit of pinching and distortion. So these are not square, and as these are going to be a lot bigger than these ones. So anytime you have angles that are not 90 degrees or not 180 degrees, you're gonna get a little bit of distortion. So really, if you wanted a perfect topology here, you probably have to. Put one, one loop for the neck and one for that. And that creates a five pole. So over here, there's more surface area than fits on a flat plane. And that's why it conforms better to the surface. So that's, I don't know, that's something I've, I've done different here. I'm not sure if that's going to work. Um, make sure everything is sort of even squares. That's going to be open. And then loop over there. And then we should subdivide. And we should smooth it. Just so it sort of fits better. Sometimes you have to go over here and just move it around a little bit because the next step is going to be shrink wrapping and the closer to the surface this is the better it's going to shrink wrap. Doesn't have to be perfect but just enough that it doesn't shrink wrap into the wrong spot. And adjust this later as well. So then add a shrink wrap modifier shrink wrap to the original sculpt and now you can isolate and check that everything worked correctly. So if, if you get these kind of distortions over here don't worry about it because there is a tool to adjust that later. So I know for a fact over here I'll need 12 vertices in this ring. You see it over here we only got eight right now because we need a strip go in between each of these fingers and that's going to take one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve vertices so i think at this point i should have subdivided this a little differently uh so what i'm going to do i'm going to decimate on subdivide once and apply. I'm going to select everything, subdivide in edit mode, and add two cuts. And what that does is it gives me these three faces per face, and that, that gives me 12 vertices. So now, what we can do is create 
add this and let's see so that one is going to be going between that extrude over here don't worry about what it looks like it's just about the topology at this point grab this end actually just match that there we go grab this extrude grab this extrude and then gap each of these with a quad and then it looks like they're they're going to be pretty long definitely want to add a loop over here so each of these are roughly square it looks like that's going to be pretty long so i'm going to cut, add a cut over there too so now we do another shrink wrap and i know for a fact that that's not going to work so i'm going to hide the original sculpture actually that's pretty good and it didn't work out over there so go in sculpt mode and Smooth it. Actually, hold on. That's a dumb idea. Yeah, okay. So, what happened over here is that uh, as I was unsubdividing, it didn't know what to do with this area. So, we're going to have one over there. That's an easy fix, thankfully. Just select that, expand the selection, remove the face. And then, uh, hold on, there you go, grid fill. And over here, delete the faces, grid fill. And then I could probably symmetrize again. Oh, and it created this middle, middle edge. So now, shrink wrap again. There you go, that's much better. Now we just apply the shrink wrap, go into sculpt mode, change to the filter, relax, and use this to make these perfect squares. Careful with the fingers because they're gonna go a little crazy. So you go a little bit, and then there's also a relax brush, slide to relax, and you can hold shift to relax things kind of locally. Um, I think that worked out pretty well. That's a little bit too small, too dense. And there you go. And because I know the nose is going to have a little bit of extra detail over there, uh, I think what I, I did last time, just increase that, inset, and move forward. had an extra loop over there but not too not too critical to get it exactly right there you go so now to subdivide one more time actually at this point you got a good base mesh going so you could just add a multi-res with a shrink wrap hide this and then crap into that hide it again and then now if you do subdivide actually shrink wrap is usually works better in project mode uh, with negative enabled sometimes you'll have to increase the limit a little bit just so it doesn't explode you put it too high you get these sort of things happening we could probably fix that with a little bit of relax later Just subdivide a couple of times 
apply the shrink wrap and that is that and then you apply the base which just makes the zero level conform to the information we have at the higher levels mm. oh my sculpture didn't have that extra bit over there so so at this point just pick the relax filter and just do that you get yeah you get this thing going on in the fingers just use the relax brush and at this point it's just a matter of sculpting uh yeah relax brush at this point it's just a matter of, of sculpting everything to look right you've got a perfect base mesh to start off of And this is usually the, the difficult part that people struggle with. At least I know I struggled with this part for a long time. Like how do you set up a nice base mesh with nice topology without taking six hours to retopologize something? And then you end up with a, a mesh that has poles everywhere and the topology is awful. This way You'll end up with a minimum amount of poles, a good base mesh, uh, and then you could just keep adding multi res subdivisions. And let's see, show the topology. There you go. And that's how you do that. And the rest is it's just sculpting. So there you go. That was my first attempt at recording a tutorial. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, maybe do more of these. If you have any questions, I stream every single day on Twitch. I answer questions like these every day. Um, so feel free to stop by. Uh, we'll catch you later.